This is our new tennis center. It's a tennis center? Yeah. It's, wow. It's indoor and outdoor. Okay. So years ago, that was a bread factory, the Mrs. Baird's <laughs> bread factory. We'd sit on the outdoor pool deck during morning workout, uh -huh. and all she, you just smelled fresh bread. <laughs> and it was it was really aggravating. <laughs> you know, swimmers are getting hungrier and hungrier during morning workout. Yeah. <laughs> We're like, when are we going to get out? We need to go eat. So. <laughs> Coleman's Carpool. We are here in Dallas, Texas at SMU at, at their brand new aquatic facility behind us. Uh, we're here with Coach Steve. Hello. And Coach Mitch. What are some of your best memories from the old facility? That facility, you know, brings back so many memories. <laughs> It's a, you know, when you coach in the same pool for a really long time, I'm sure any coach would, you know, has that feeling. Yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of, it was a great pool for meets. Old redwood bleachers that, you know, that, you know, people sat on and, you know, we had some great dual meets in there. I think probably my uh, fondest memory dual meet wise is when we swam uh, University of Georgia. And at that time, George was on this huge winning streak during the era of when Christy Kowal was on the okay. on the team. Yeah. And I just remember their faces when they, you know, they'd been in that gorgeous pool at the University of Georgia, <laughs> and they're walking in and seeing our pool, six lanes, you know, steel and wood rafters, and you know, they're just. I looked at Kowal's face, just like, this can't be possible. What are we doing here? <laughs> and uh, you know, came to meet. You know, just broke perfectly for us, and and uh, we had a great team as well, and, and ended up beating Georgia in that pool and breaking one of their, I'm sure, many, you know, winning streaks. So that was a great one. I think when they first started the men's uh, Dallas Morning uh, News Classic, um, you know, they had this really strong team. They weren't super deep. Lundquist was on the team, and. Rodenbaugh and Rich Sager and those guys and uh, he's like you know I think we could be pretty competitive in the eight swimmer meet maybe we should just set, do one like that so you know that's how we came up with the the, uh, the idea from that from Coach Mack's idea we basically copied the format for the women and then when when Eddie Sinek came uh, to take over the men's team one of the greatest greatest you know uh, athletes on the team was Scott Doney, who went on to win an Olympic silver medal in, in diving. It's like, well, we gotta have diving in the meet, so then we added, <laughs> you know, added diving to the meet at that time. Mm -hmm. All the women's meets have, have had diving in them because, you know, uh, you know, we thought that that would be the way to go, yeah. make it a complete, uh, a complete team. You guys just got the new aquatic facility, so what? goes into the process of actually building a new pool? Well, you know, at SMU, it's it was definitely something that had been talked about. We, you know, were planning it for years. I mean, I've been here for th over 30 years, and it, it was a topic of conversation, you know, pretty much every day. You know, our original pool, I'll drive you by where it was, Perkins Natatorium. It was a gymnasium uh, that was built in the 40s and the 50s. They converted it to a pool. So it was really a unique uh, facility in that it had a lot of seating. You know, the fans were like right down to the deck. and But it was a six lane pool. So it wasn't really compatible for, you know, a combined, you know, men's and women's swimming program, diving program. It was just one tank. Mm -hmm. Six lanes, so <laughs> you know, and that had a cha its challenges. In the in the 70s, we built a uh, Coach Bar built a 50 meter outdoor pool, so that really I think helped keep us relevant. But the planning and so forth of this current project it really didn't start in earnest until the pool was condemned, and when we found that we couldn't, you know. It had the building had you know basically outlasted its life, probably by quite a few years. <laughs> so uh, 
you know, we then we really started to, you know, put plans together, get the university involved and our, you know, development office involved in, in trying to raise the money because as a private school, it's not, you know, a situation where we can just raise student fees and, and have a, a pool that way and building a, a rec center like you see at a lot of college campuses. So mm -hmm. that was really the impetus to, to, you know, really get moving on it. And we've had a lot of support from our alumni. We have basically, you know, raised uh, most of the $22 million to build the facility came from swimming alums. So it was, you know, quite a project to do that. So we're coming up on the side of the outdoor 50 meter pool and that's gonna be torn down sometime this spring. Mm -hmm. And we've got plans to fundraise for an outdoor pool beside our new new aquatic center, which is really what we, is part of our master plan. Wow. I think something that Eddie and Steve have definitely done too in order to build this, this, this pool, and they're pretty humble about it, but they have laid quite the foundation of, of people that care about the pool and care about, you know, you don't just fundraise 22 million overnight, you know, <laughs> I want to build this new pool, here it is. Uh, and I want to do it, you know, right now. It took a, a long time, and it, and it, the seeds were kind of planted years in advance through, um, you know, outreach through lesson programs, through kids that have learned to swim in the old pool, uh, the master's program, you know, club team, stuff like that, where it can really impact the community and the relationships that they've built, I think really helped the fundraising efforts. I don't think that they just, you know, arrived at SMU and then the next year go, okay, we're building a new pool because I don't like having a six-lane pool anymore. It was definitely a thing that took a very long time and a lot of hard work on, on their parts. Yeah, the nice thing with our new facility, you know, it's a half a mile away from the current site, so mm -hmm. we didn't really know how that was going to impact our practices and so forth. And, you know, after two days, got the coaches together and I'm like, how is it possible that everybody's here 15 minutes earlier than they were <laughs> when we were right in the middle of campus? <laughs> so that was that was a worry, but one that really wasn't founded. Wow, this is a nice campus. It's usually ranked in the top 10 in pretty much every type of campus ranking there is. Really? Yeah, no, it, it, I usually when I'm talking to kids on the phone when I'm recruiting, I go, we have a beautiful campus and most, you know what I'm saying, I know a lot of coaches tell you we have a beautiful <laughs> campus, but I'm like, I'm serious. We actually have <laughs> objectively, a, you know, objectively, <laughs> like you know, kids get on here and they go, "This place is gorgeous," and I'm like, "I told you that." And they're like, "Well, I just thought, <laughs> just thought what?" <laughs> so, how long have you been here, Steve? I think this is my 32nd year. <laughs> That's a while. Yeah, yeah. And so, how fortunately, I got into coaching when I was pretty young. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's. I mean, what? That's. You know, especially in something like coaching for any sport, like that, that kind of longevity is very rare. What, what has, what has led to that? Well, I, I really love this place. I love SMU, mm -hmm. and so you know, great you know, attachment. When I first came here uh, as a grad assistant, um, I had swum at Florida State, and we had a graduate assistant there who had swum at SMU and he would tell us stories about the program and about Coach Mack and and when I was looking for a place to get a grad degree and get some coaching experience, you know, SMU was one of the places that I thought about coming to and you know, came back here in the late eighties to run the women's swim team and, and develop that and you know always felt like there was one more thing that we could do mm -hmm. so <laughs> you know uh, you know just wanted to keep you know building the program and 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 seeing that through so even though I might have had opportunities to go to other universities over my career I always felt like you know SMU was the place for me so I'm very happy here and really glad I've, I've stayed and built my coaching career here that's great
How long have you been here, Mitch? Uh, this is my fifth season. Okay. Um, so, been here a little while. Yeah. Um, I got introduced to SMU through the swimming camp. Okay. Came down here the summer I graduated from the University of Connecticut. Um, same thing like Steve, looking to just get more coaching experience. So, obviously, you sign up for a summer camp. Um, and uh, met Eddie and uh, Andy Kershaw, who was his assistant at the time, was running the camp. And, uh, kind of showed me SMU and you know, luck would have it there was an opening on the men's side uh, the next year so I uh, <laughs> packed my stuff and moved from New England down to Dallas <laughs> took a chance and it's been pretty amazing so far and you know SMU and Dallas it's it's a unique situation because a lot of schools are it's kind of a college town and being from Massachusetts you know there's so many schools um, in Boston yeah BU BC MIT, Harvard, um, Tufts, you know, it's, there's just so many schools um, that can claim that city, and I, I really think that SMU is unique in the fact that it's it's really the feeding, you know, the feeding school into into Dallas, and it's, it is, you know, as we were just on the campus, you can see it's, it's really closed off campus where you don't feel like you're in a city, mm-hmm. and then you drive, you know, two minutes down the road, boom, there's the skyline. Yeah. So coaching here has definitely been a, a very unique situation, especially for a young coach that might want to, you know, go out to a couple more restaurants or, or do some things, you know, that you might want to do. So it was, it's, been, it's been a pretty fun experience. And for, so for, like, you know, prospective student or athlete as well, how do you think that experience is unique of having, you know, a very big university on top of city well I think it's uh, you know there's so many majors now where everybody's doing internships and you know Dallas has you know uh, a really really uh, large number of corporate headquarters here pretty much any business has an office here whether it's a national uh, business or an international business engineering is really strong in the city of Dallas so Everybody is able to um, get some experiences outside of the classroom here and, you know, go to a school that's, you know, a moderate size. It's not, you know, it's not a a really large school, but it's not a small school either. I think we're, you know, 10 or 11,000 students. So, but I think that opportunity, you know, whether it's in, you know, applied physiology or the medical field or engineering or business, communications, you know, all the different things that SMU offers. There's a lot of opportunities outside the classroom that they can get involved in that I think helps promote their resume, so to speak, when they graduate as far as looking for jobs or going to grad school or going to medical school or law school or whatever they intend to do.